Hello, ICPC friends. Welcome you all to our first webinar. My name is Karolina Sajniak and I'm the coordinator of ICPC Career Boost Academy. Let me introduce you to Mateusz Telega. Hey guys. He started working with music uh, 15 years ago and I hope he will tell us some interesting things about the world of home recording. Uh, his presentation should uh, last around 40 minutes. There will be time for your questions after. Thank you very much and please let Mateusz take the floor. How can I share my screen? All right, I hope, I hope you'll see my presentation right now. Um, yeah. I hope it works. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, hi, uh, my name is Matt, Mateusz Telega. Uh, I'm a music educator. I run, uh, I think, the biggest Polish music production school called Academia Dzienku. And I specialize in electronic music production. But uh, I start, when I started 15 years ago, uh, my journey inside the professional music uh, and sound field, uh, I started with home recording. Um, I was 13, <laughs> a teenager who liked hip hop music and I started to record my friends in the basement of my parents' house. So that's how I get inside uh, uh, music production and years later I'm sitting here, we're in my, in my private studio and uh, yeah. Ah, you, I think you can't see my uh, my camera when I, when you see my presentation. So, yeah, we are in my studio. Maybe you can see something. I hope so. And so uh, that's where I went after all that years. I was um, into, I was invited here to share some of my knowledge about home recording, especially for you, for pianists who train uh, playing this instrument in home and want to record it and probably process it, maybe play around with the recorded sound. So the next 40 minutes will be uh, devoted to that topic, home recording for beginners. I assume that you don't have any, any knowledge about that at all. So I will start from the very basic things. And uh, it's not a complete presentation, uh, but I hope after those 40 minutes, you will know where to and what to look for in, in, in the internet. Yeah, can I go? So the plan for now is um, like I divided this presentation in four, uh, four episodes. Uh, I will start with trying to convince you why should you do this? Why should you record your own sounds in the studio, in your home studio, instead of going to a professional place where you can pay some uh, money for a professional service? Why should we do this in studio, in home studio? If we want to do this, we need to have some equipment, some software. So the main part will be uh, devoted to this. What do we need? How much it does cost? Uh, what are the, uh, the most typical uh, equipment pieces you should use in home studio? The last quarter uh, minutes is for your questions. I think you'll have some kind of chat or any other way to ask me some questions. All right, so why should we do this? Why should, we, um, why should we invest some money and time to uh, learn some new uh, skills and buy some equipment to uh, make a, uh, our, one of the rooms in our home a studio, a place where we can record our piano? So I think like, the most general thing is that you can um, record your own practice sessions and it gives you a different perspective of listening to your own to your own music uh, because it's different when you play and listen and when you listen only you can concentrate on different details at the same time and then you can probably make your uh, make your playing better you can also use those recordings for sharing you can share it with your teachers you can share it with different uh, players and then you can exchange some um, some knowledge between people even online without uh, seeing each other um, but from my perspective, as an electronic music producer, I think that uh, the opportunity to record your own um, piano in your own home is uh, that you get an, an artistic freedom. You're not limited to the time you pay for in studio, 
but um, instead of you have unlimited time for experimenting you can um, go to the studio at in the middle of the night if you uh, want to do this at that time if you're creative in night you don't have to pay for every hour like in a classic uh, recording studio and you can just play with your instrument not only practice but try to do different things use different audio effects record sound on a sound and just experiment with the sound and it can give you uh, a new skills and it can expand your musical language instead of only playing ready-made compositions you can try to change them uh, to re rem remix them or even try to compose your own things so if you have a home studio and if it's set properly you're getting a lot of new options to play with so um, what do we need to make it happen of course if we want to record things uh, our computer will be the center of this all action because like ev everyone have a, has a computer no matter is it a laptop or it's a desktop unit uh, we have an apple or pc it doesn't matter but we have it so we don't have to buy uh, a new piece of equipment to start our um, our home studio but we need a uh, professional software called daw uh, that will allow us to um, to record and edit sound there are a lot of DAWs on the market. Uh, that acronym uh, is for Digital Audio Workstation. So we can think about this software as a like a recording studio in a box, in a, in one in one program. It's a center of our home studio. It's a tool where you can record sound with, of course, with additional microphones and different stuff. I will describe later. You can edit those recordings. I mean, you can delete some bad parts. You can take some best recordings from different times and mix them together or you can even change some volumes or not uh, even notes so this kind of editing but you can also put some audio effects uh, you can put them in real time meaning you will play your instrument hearing let's say an echo or reverb or more sophisticated effects at the time or you can record your audio plane without any effects and add them later. <coughs> the latter thing is very important because um, the plane recordings are not, uh, let's say, are not the sound you hear on the CDs you're listening to or on, on the radio. We need all the effects to process the sound to, let's say broadly, make the sound quality better. And that process is called mixing. So in DAWs, we can mix our recordings. We can use FX to increase the quality of the recording. We can also use virtual instruments, and that can be a really interesting thing for you because, uh, because you're trained professionals, uh, trained in musical keyboard, let's say, uh, you have an access to unlimited world of virtual instruments. You can use electric piano or a dedicated MIDI controller, which is a musical uh, keyboard, which is not an instrument, but allows you to um, control virtual instruments. And those virtual instruments can have, can have a very broad range of sounds. They can sound, sound like a piano, like the model you don't have. Let's say you have an upright piano and you want to play a Steinway grand piano, you can do this in computer, but you can also play string instruments or drum instruments, like there's no limits. All types of synthesizers are also inside, inside computer. So with your, with your MIDI controller or with your electronic piano, you can control inside DAW virtual instruments and it will expand your musical language. You can even make of whole compositions, including your recordings, along with visual instruments. Those DAWs are, well, they have different specializations. I think we can divide them into two groups. The first one, let's say general studio views group. Uh, I think um, you, we can include their uh, programs like Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, Reaper, Sonar. There is a lot of them. They have very similar abilities. OK, there are some differences, but they are not very um, important from our perspective so you can choose any of them if you're working on on apple computer probably logic would be the best choice because it's quite uh, quite cheap for apple users 
if you're a PC musician, then probably Reaper would be the best choice, again, because of the price. But if you don't want to buy the cheapest software, you can also consider Cubase or even Pro Tools because they all have some advantages or disadvantages and you need to uh, dive into the, this, uh, find some comparisons, maybe ask some people to choose the best one for you. If you just need to record sound without any sophisticated editing, any program will do. So let's go with the cheapest one or the easiest available for you. If you're interested more into sound processing, into composing uh, tracks with your recordings, but also including some virtual instruments or samples, then you should probably look closer to the electronic music production uh, group of DAWs. Uh, in this group, we have, let's say, three, four leading softwares. Uh, Ableton Live is the most well-known, the most popular one, but we have also FL Studio, Reason, or Bidvik in, uh, in this group. I personally use Ableton Live for my um, use, from my perspective, it's the best one, but I'm really, really uh, into electronic music, which is more about uh, sound design, and Ableton Live is uh, really um, expanded in this field, so I can create my own sounds in many different creative ways. That's how uh, Reaper looks like. You can see rows, which are called tracks. You record your own sound onto those, onto those tracks. You can also mix the, the volumes or um, play with effects in the mixer field. Ableton Live looks a little bit similar. You can also see rows, which we call tracks. But uh, the real difference, uh, difference is under what we see right now. Ableton Live is more uh, into, is more about looping, uh, sound processing, uh, generating new sounds, so the world of electronic music. Reaper and similar DAFs are more about recording and editing recorded sound. So you need to think first, what would you like to do in this software? And then it will be easier to uh, find out which one will be good for you. Those are my recommendations for, for the start. But the computer and the DAW, uh, our main uh, software, is not enough because if we want to record a sound uh, which is acoustic, which is outside computer, we need some more things to connect it and to make it happen. Uh, the most important uh, thing uh, at the beginning is the audio interface because that part, as you can see in my diagram, is, uh, is the one that allows us to, to uh, send signals, audio signals outside the computer and uh, also receive some signals from the outer wor world. Let's say a signal from the microphone. What would, you like to, what would we like to send out? Let's say a signal for our speakers or for our headphones. So the means of monitoring the sound. Let's start with audio interface. I have one with me. I hope it can be seen here. Yeah, well, I can see it, so I hope you too. Uh, that's uh, Avid Mbox, uh, in Mbox third generation interface, but it actually doesn't matter really because you have dozens of similar uh, interfaces uh, on the market. As you can see, it's, uh, it's a device in the form of, of a box with a lot of connectors on both sides and some, uh, some knobs to adjust some parameters. And uh, that's, a, that's a centerpiece of equipment in our studio. It will allow us to connect professional speakers, headphones, and microphones to and from the computer. Let's go back for a moment here. So going back to the diagram, as you can see, if I want to record um, a sound from a microphone, let's say I will record my piano or my voice with my microphone, it first, the signal first need to go to something called preamp. It's a shortcut for preamplifier. Microphone preamplifier is a, is a small piece, a small device that will uh, amplify the signal from the microphone because uh, that signal, that electronic, electric signal is very, um, 
let's say quiet so we need to amplify it before it goes inside computer you don't need to buy a separate microphone pre-amplifier because if you buy this kind of audio interface it usually has at least two microphone uh, two built-in microphone pre-amplifiers if you need more you can buy more expensive unit with more up to eight this one is equipped with well, that's tricky <laughs> with two uh, microphone uh, inputs so I can connect up to two different microphones into the system and that's a very good choice if I would like to record piano because I will say it later but usually usually you record piano with two microphones so you don't need to worry to, uh, about buying separate piece of gear that one is all in one box the price is, well, it depends from the manufacturer and some other things I will describe right now. So, um, first of all, like audio interface, that name is a, it's a fancy name for professional sound card. So, usually when you just uh, use computer for listening to YouTube or maybe playing games, you, you just use a built-in sound card. If you want to have a studio, you need to... A, a, a professional sound card, so all the interface. It will connect our our software with the outside world. And what's important? Uh, what do you think? What do you need to think about choosing uh, that interface for you? So first thing is uh, inputs, inputs and outputs, meaning how many and what type of signals I can um, connect to my interface. Uh, the most common standard is that you have two microphone inputs which are uh, doubled as uh, guitar inputs so you can also connect an electric guitar or bass electric bass guitar here if you have a friend who wants to be recorded also or if you have an electric piano it usually has two all outputs so you need two inputs which are in this kind of interface to record this kind of sound um, in this uh, most typical uh, interface, you also have two up to four outputs, which allows you to connect left and right speaker. That's why we need at least two outputs. And if you have four outputs, you can use them for, let's say, connecting some computer audio to external audio effects or something like that. It's not as important as, um, as the inputs. Yeah, is it, it's okay. I don't know if you see my screen right now or not. I hope you can see my uh, my camera because it's most important at the moment. Uh, most of you will do with two input interface. Um, it will usually uh, include two microphone preamplifiers. So if you have two microphone inputs, it means you can connect two microphones. The uh, last thing which is important when you choose uh, an audio interface is the drivers, the small program that connects your audio interface with your computer. Different brands use, well, put different uh, stress to make the best uh, drivers and usually you pay more for the better ones. So you can buy um, an interface with two microphone inputs for let's say $100 but you can also buy uh, the same amount of input outputs for three or four hundred dollars. It depends from the manufacturer. The best ones are RME, Universal Audio. Um, the best, let's say, cost to quality is, uh, I think it's um, Presonus, Avid, yeah, and Focusrite. Maybe Focusrite is the best choice if you don't want to spend that much, but there are dozens of them, so it's worth uh, digging deeper to find the best uh, the best option for you. Oh, and the last thing, you connect this with mostly with USB uh, cables, so you don't need anything extra to connect it to your computer. Okay, so we have an audio interface. We have the preamplifiers, microphone preamplifiers, which are built-in audio interface. What next? So we need the microphone. We need to record some. They can see you. They've got. They can see me. Yeah. You can see me. That's great. I hope you can also see my presentation because I'm referring to it all the time. 
so yeah, microphones. Um, so there are hundreds of different types of microphones on the market and what would you need, what would you like to choose to record your own uh, piano? So um, let's say for the start that there are two different type of microphones, uh, uh, meaning how the sound is um, transferred to, to analog uh, signal. So uh, we have dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. Those are two most important uh, types. For your uh, situation, for recording a piano, you should stick to condenser microphones because this kind of microphone is better, uh, is, 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 uh, has a better sound in this application because dynamic microphones are used for, let's say, for a stage. I have, uh, I think, the same model as in the presentation with me. That's a Shure SM58, the most common dynamic vocal microphone in the market, produced from the 70s, I believe. And you can see it on uh, unlimited uh, concert recordings and um, studio photos. That's a great microphone for vocals. As you can see, dynamic microphones usually has this kind of construction that allows you to hold them in hand. So um, you can sing to it. And you can't say the same about condenser microphones. You usually need some extra um, piece of uh, gear, uh, a special microphone holder to mount it onto microphone stand. And uh, but that's kind of this this advantage. But um, you're getting better sound quality with a condenser microphones. So um, if you're recording this kind of a signal like a piano or vocal, you should stick to condenser ones. Unfortunately, it's the most expensive type of microphones. Dynamic microphones are just cheaper, but with worse quality, let's say. And um, with condenser microphones, like the last thing you should know is that you need two of them, because if you record piano, that's a very sophisticated uh, sound source. We have a lot of low frequencies, middle, high frequencies, and the sound, sor sound source is very wide. So one single microphone would not get all those strings that are inside the piano with the same volume. We need to use two microphones that will be placed in a special manner I will just describe and show later to catch the overall sound of the piano, let's say in a similar way our ears uh, hear it. A small uh, addition is that we'll have a stereo sound, which will sound richer and fuller and generally speaking better than a single microphone mono sound. Uh, this kind of uh, setup, setup with two uh, condenser microphones can be quite expensive, but for home usage, for experimenting, you don't have to have the best possible microphones. I think you can stick with um the chip manufacturers for the start there are a lot of them s electronics mxl samsung rode they can sell you a pair of uh, condenser microphones looking like this we call it a pencil microphones for let's say 300 to uh to a thousand dollars it can be expensive if you buy a thousand dollars pair, but if you buy a three hundred dollars pair, it's it sounds a little bit better. Uh, with this set setup, you'll get uh, even with three hundred dollars microphones, you'll get a very good sound. You'll be pleased with, and probably buying more expensive um, microphones will not be very uh, very good idea for your home applicants uh, application because. The good microphones need good uh, acoustics and that's a thing you usually don't do. You don't interfere with your acoustics in your home studio. Uh, so cheap microphones will get you the right sound. That's what I think. And after some time, if you gain experience, then you will have enough motivation to sell those ones, buy more expensive, and then you have enough knowledge to choose the more expensive ones by yourself. So let's start with a cheap stereo, stereo condenser microphone pair, and that would be, the, I think, the best, um, the best setup to start with.
So um, let's uh, sum this up. To start with, we need a computer we all have. We have a DAW software. Um, which software you will use depends from your idea how we will um, use that recorded sound uh, for um, like, let's say just recording. I recommended the cheapest one, Reaper or Logic for Apple users for more advanced um, processing. Ableton Live is my choice, but I think you can do the same good stuff with FL Studio or Reason. They, are, they all have different specializations. Um, with DAW and computer, uh, we need to have an audio interface to connect that computer world to the outside world. And audio interface is a thing that allows us to connect different signals for us, for recorders. The main thing is that uh, audio interface has built-in microphone preamplifiers that will amplify the signal from our microphones. With condenser microphones, it will also provide a special kind of uh, electric current to power them up. So you need it to have those microphones working. And also you will have an opportunity to connect your, let's say, a prof professional speakers or headphones. I will discuss later with um, different connectors built into this box, which we called an audio interface. Uh, I also told you something about microphones. We had condenser and dynamic microphones with uh, recording an, a, a piano in home, I think a stereo condenser pair is uh, the best choice. Um, you should look for a pen or pencil condenser microphones because the characteristic is uh, best suitable for this applicant's application. Well, so we have, we have some, some gear. Um, before I will, s I will tell you something about uh, the microphone placement and other workflow uh, issues. Uh, the last piece of gear that need to be discussed is uh, our speakers and headphones, because we all know that if we record sound, we need to uh, listen it back for many reasons. After recording, we need to probably edit the sound or we need to monitor meaning listen to the sound uh, to make some audio effects, uh, audio effects adjustments, or sometimes we record our piano along with a pre-made um, different tracks. Like let's say our friend recorded uh, a bass drum, uh, a bass guitar or, or drums, and we are recording our piano as a part of that song. So we need to hear uh, the pre-made tracks and play along with them. So for recording part, the most important thing for you is to have a proper headphones because if you're recording um, in the same place where you have your computer, you need to wear uh, headphones that will not let the sound outside uh, the earbuds. And I have this kind of, you say, closed back, closed back headphones. You can recognize it because uh, well, their back is closed. <laughs> That's pretty obvious. So this kind of headphones, when you put it on, it uh, don't, it doesn't let uh, the sound to go outside. Uh, so it won't get into into the microphone. So you won't record your backing tracks along with your piano. You will record only your piano, but have an opportunity to listen to the rest of the band playing. So that's what we need. What we need. So you need a closed back headphones for monitoring the sound while recording with backing tracks. This kind of headphones is not expensive. That's a good information. You can, you can stick to $30 uh, model. And a lot of uh, manufacturers are doing this kind of stuff. Let's say uh, AKG or uh, Sennheiser or Bayer Dynamic. The, that's the most important, most uh, popular brands. But if it's closed back, it's okay for you. Different thing is when you're talking about headphones for uh, the later stage, I mean, processing and editing the sound. Then we need uh, an, an open back headphones, which are more expensive and not that easy to buy, but it's not that important here because we're focusing on recording. 
while you uh, after you record uh, you can listen back to the sound not only on the headphones but also on the speakers so well that's probably the most expensive part of your uh, setup it can be the most expensive part but it, i don't think everybody will need professional studio monitors speakers that's the fancy name for the speakers um, if you plan to do a uh, professional work with the sound mixing mastering electronic music production then probably you will use the quality of the of that professional speakers and then you will have to buy them which is a cost from 500 dollars up up to 2000 3000 it depends how much you're uh, you're going to spend you can spend for it a thousand dollars pair uh, of speakers is a very good quality one but it's also quite expensive one if you're just trying to play with the sound let's say how it goes you know um, add some effects uh, and experiment you don't need that expensive piece of gear because you can just connect whatever you have in your home uh, like a hi-fi um, a tower or like computer speakers you just need to have a decent uh, way to listen to them so not a computer laptop speakers not a very small uh, computer speakers but uh, normal ones the ones you're using to listen music to in your home and uh, i think they will do for mm -hmm. sure all right how it would it would look like when you ha have all that gear. Um, I, ha I found some some photos in the internet to show how it can look like because home studio is sometimes quite an exotic idea, like a studio in home, how it can look like. So we have an upright piano here and some classic speakers, uh, some uh, some other mm, equipment um, in, uh, here on the right side. There is no computer. It's, it can be an interesting option for some of you because if you're really anti-computer people, you can try to use uh, hard disk recorders, portable ones. That piece here is a portable, uh, portable uh, hard disk recorder. I don't think, if, is it really a better idea to use this instead of computer? Maybe it was like 15 years ago when computers were not stable as they are now and not as cheap as they are now so uh, this um, field of market is uh, is going is getting really small but if you really want you can use that kind of portable hard disk recorder which is in essence a computer in a box with a smaller uh, a smaller um, you know screen so uh, i think uh, uh, a proper uh, configured computer with daw is always a better way to record your sound and probably it's cheaper also because those hard disk recorders are quite expensive another setup here you can see on the left side that we have an electronic an electric electronic piano um, which you don't record with microphones you use a standard jack cables you need two of them because you have left and right channel you connect those jacks to your audio interface and you record your sound directly from the instrument most professional ones have this kind of audio output so it's very easy to record you don't need an extra equipment microphones this kind of stuff to to record it uh, most of them uh, that's an another an, an, another additional bonus will have a midi output midi midi is a uh, that's a standard of um, uh, of how we send notes uh, between music programs, controllers, instruments. So if you uh, if your um, electric piano sends MIDI signal to your computer, you can use it as a MIDI controller, meaning it will control virtual instruments in your DAW. So you can use your piano as a controller for any kind of uh, uh, virtual instrument let's say a better sounding piano or a string instrument or a synthesizer so if you have an electric piano it's uh, i think it's a quite uh, nice uh, piece of equipment in your studio it gives you a lot of opportunities easier to record and allow you to um, to use the virtual instruments 
And this kind of setup is um, set up without an, an actual piano. We have only a MIDI controller here, even here, that's a different type of MIDI controller, computer, a lot of mess on the desk, like a typical home studio. The last thing I, I would like to tell you about before the workflow and the question part is how do you place those microphones? I told you that we need two microphones, two condenser ones, the pencil microphones, and um, it's because we need to record, let's say, the full sound of the piano. So here on that uh, screenshot, you can see um, one of the, uh, um, of the ways you can put your microphones. You can see that we take off the upper lid of, from, the, from the upright piano to have an, a, a better access for the microphones to the soundboard. And then we try to place both microphones evenly across the soundboard. You can experiment with the width uh, between the, uh, with the distance between the microphones, uh, but just start with a symmetrical approach and then um, try to record in a few different um, configurations and you will find the best sounding one for yourself. And if it will catch you, if you uh, think that it's interesting to record your own sound, just Google upright piano recording and you'll have a very deep source of knowledge, different approaches, different um, tutorials on YouTube and uh, articles. So there's a lot of resources uh, online to, um, to, to be a better recording engineer. Um, one thing you should know about recording your own sound is that uh, it's wise to have two people inside in the room while recording. Uh, the one will be the player and the second one will be the, let's say, a recording engineer. So if you're the player, if you're playing your piano, you should, um, well, it will be the best for you to concentrate only on playing piano not to uh, think about how to uh, set up tracks, how to set up your DAW, how to set up your microphones. Is this microphone set up properly or not? All this technical stuff should be on someone other's head. It can be your friend, you'll, you'll uh, teach uh, how to do this. It's not really complicated. But the main thing is that you both concentrate on different things. So your friend engineer will have his own headphones listening to the sound. So if there will be any crackle, any drop out in the sound, which, which can happen, or maybe a barking dog outside or something like that, he, uh, he, he will probably uh, hear it uh, better than you because you'll be concentrated on playing. On the other hand, if you have only to play, it's good for you because the performance will be better if you don't have to think about all this technical stuff around. Of course, it's possible to record your your own and play at the same time, but it's uh, you know it it needs more training for you and probably it's not the best one, the best way to approach this. But there is one uh, one thing uh, I would like to uh, show you. Uh, it's a uh, it's a track from a Polish pianist called Sławek Jaskółka. Uh, he's a great let's say jazz pianist, I believe. I have I have an album called C. Oh, maybe, yeah, you can see it. It's a solo piano. It's an upright piano, not a grand piano album, which uh, Slavik Jaskuke recorded by himself in his, not even studio. It's, uh, he, I was in the concert and he, he was uh, uh, talking about how he recorded it. So he told us that he just, you know, put some microphones in quite a random way uh, just to record a demo of his playing um, in the attic of a house he was living uh, where the piano was. And he just recorded in on uh, some DAW he didn't uh, specify, but he just recorded it. And well, that's the album. That's a really beautiful uh, music, which um, was uh, awarded the best sounding recording of 2015 in Poland by some high fidelity hi-fi magazine. I don't know uh, the magazine, but um, the prize is, is real. I checked this. So um, an amateur recording 
captured something that could not be captured in the studio. Some emotions that 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 were during that playing because uh, he was there alone. He was there at the night. Nobody was listening. He didn't felt any pressure. He was just playing around. But he uh, he was um, smart enough to hit record before playing around. And we have a beautiful album. Let's listen to um, an, a piece of one of the tracks from that C1. So if you're interested in it, um, just Google Swavek Jaskulke or Jaskulka. I think you can see the name here on the screen because it's a really beautiful album. Not uh, the only one. He recorded a few of them, a solo piano with this mellow arpeggios. Really nice stuff. A trained ear can hear some distortion and other technical problems in this recording, but it doesn't matter as long as we can hear what he wanted to say us with this music. So I think it's a really... A uh, good example that recording home can give you some opportunities that you won't have in the studio and it's worth considering. All right, I think it's my time. It's 40 minutes. Yeah. So it's okay. uh, time so for questions. Time for questions. Where can I see questions? Yes, just There's chat. there right. is a chat. We will see. If... Are there any questions uh, re regarding uh, to what I said? or maybe about some more music production stuff here or microphones okay is it working i'm sure it's working mm, no questions where is the best mic placement for grand piano well that's that i think that's a uh, that's a matter of a uh, lot of discussions during the last 60 years. Um, I don't have proper, I don't have proper uh, screenshots for here because I, I assumed you will probably have a upright piano, not a grand piano, but you can start with uh, placing a stereo uh, microphone pair with one microphone pointing at the, let's say, uh, um, the highest uh, octaves and the second one to the lowest, but the exact one will be varying um, what kind of sound would you like to receive? Um, how um, open, do you open or not your upper lid and uh, what kind of microphones do you have? Cause some microphones uh, have, uh, it's called a cardio cardioid uh, pattern, which means they are they are um, hearing the sound only from the front. Some other have the figure of eight uh, pattern, which means they hear the sound from the front and the rear, but not the sides. And the third type is the omni pattern, which, uh, which means that they hear the sound from all the sides. So depending on which kind of microphone you have, uh, then you place it differently. Uh, to make the best of the sound. So it's a bit broad to talk about this without any direct example. Okay, Malvina. Sometimes I record like mus a classical music concert with Zoom Q4, mostly piano or chamber with piano. How to know where to put it in the hall to get the best possible sound quality? I assume you're using the built-in stereo microphones, right? 
uh, in that Zoom, or do you have? Uh, okay, yes. yeah. Well, that's uh, not the best situation to start with, because uh, those built-in microphones are in, are good quality, but not suitable for this kind of application. But if you like, you have to use them. You should be uh, as close to the sound source uh, sound source as possible. Um, not too close. Uh, too close. I mean, if it's grand piano, let's say you should put it uh, probably probably around your head, uh, behind or up. I know it won't look very good, but it's good for uh, the recording. Because uh, if it will be closer to the strings, you will get um, those strings louder than the strings that are farther uh, from the microphone. And if you uh, if you uh, set your uh, um, recorder, let's say in the audience, you will have a lot of reverb of the sound, um, you know, the sound that bounces back from the walls, sailing floor. So uh, you don't you, you will have a very smeared and metal sound, not very direct and good, good in quality. So a place near your head is a good th uh, thing to start, or like just experiment with this one meter um, distance, yeah, thanks. Okay, some more questions, guys. Um, okay, Mr. Galaxy S8 or lady. Yeah. What did the, uh, okay. So um, those are quite different uh, sound sources. With acoustic guitar, uh, when I was recording acoustic guitar, I usually used two different microphones. The first one was the same type I recommended you for the upright uh, and grand piano, uh, the pencil microphone, and it was pointing from the, uh, you can see it from the up, <laughs> just like uh, beh from behind the player, a um, little bit, uh, it's hard to show it here on the on the screen, but you, sh you need to point it um, uh, not to the sound hole, but a little bit more to the, uh, What's in the English name of, the, of that part where you press the strings? A fingerboard. A fingerboard, yeah, that place. The second microphone will be a, would be a different one if you can afford to have different types. It will be um, uh, one with a big membrane, uh, so not a pencil one, but uh, more like this kind of microphone. And you point it from the front of the player uh, not directly to the sound hole because it will make the sound uh, too much, uh, a little bit dull. Uh, so you also point it more to the fingerboard uh, from the angle, not directly like, let's say, this is my, my fingerboard. So it's not like this, but it's from the angle. And that uh, could, uh, can give you the best um, detailed sound. Uh, with the violin, it's a little bit different because um, it's hard to be in one place when you play violin. You move a little bit and it's not a very good thing for recording in studio. So we stick uh, very often to uh, microphones. We call it, I believe, on a goose neck. A clipped microphones, so you can clip them to the, um, to the instrument itself. So even if you move, um, you won't move your sound source uh, from the perspective of the microphone, and that's a good thing. So uh, that's a, that clipped microphone with a gooseneck, it's a good uh, thing to start with. And the option to get additional microphone to Zoom Q4 to have better sound quality. Q4, what kind of microphone is this? Uh, can I use this? Mm -hmm. Let's find which one is this. Okay, so it's a camera. Wait, oh, well, um, if it has an audio input, you can probably try to use, um, hmm, you can use uh, separate microphones with preamplifier or a sound mixer with an audio output, and then you connect that output to the input of the camera. I believe it can be a mini jack input, in this kind of cameras. If you have an audio input, external audio input, it's a mini jack input. It's kind of tricky one because mini jack is not a professional connector, uh, but it can be done. But it will, you know, you, you'll have to buy a mixer and uh, separate microphones to make it happen. So maybe it would be better to try to uh, take your uh, computer and audio interface if you already have them or plan to have them 
uh, along with the camera and then try to find out some way of synchronizing the the sound you recorded separately on the on the computer and the sound recorded by the camera i usually stick to a classic clap because uh, your camera hear the clap and your computer hear the clap so you can easily um, put those two, uh, two sounds uh, in your computer uh, in the software for video editing and then replace the, uh, the poor camera sound with the professional recording on the computer. Okay. Is it important? Is that the room where we uh, record? I believe the question is about where we record. Like, is it important that we record in kitchen or not? So yes, it's important uh, for acoustic instruments. Uh, I've, well, I, w I didn't mention about that, uh, but it's a really important thing. Uh, different rooms sound differently. You probably know this from your field, playing in a concert, concert hall or different types of concert halls gives you different sound impression and microphones hear the same sound. So if you play in a, poor, a place, the recording will be poor and you don't, you won't have any options to change this. So uh, if, you're, um, if, if your goal is to have the best sound quality possible, it's hard to get it in home studio if you don't have a separate room for this kind of, uh, of, this, this kind of uh, activity. So then you, you can probably go to a concert hall. Maybe you have a place where you practice, which sounds good. Then you can move your laptop and have a portable recording uh, system or for the final recording, uh, go to the studio where acoustics are things that people think about and they sound good. Okay. All right. Any We've other got questions? Five more minutes, so we're waiting for the questions. And I think there is no questions so time to end our webinar <laughs> thank you i hope you learned something and uh, you know what yes. to look thank for thank you mateusz uh, for letting us learn so much and uh, our next speaker is going to be uh, basia tworek um, a yoga teacher so uh, i hope to see you next month and have a Great Sunday. Bye. Hey.